Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. Action galore on Monday night across the NBA, inclusive of Steph Curry's 40 point explosion, lifting the Golden State Warriors to a sixth straight victory. They defeated the Houston Rockets by 14 points, while a Joel Embiid less Philadelphia 76ers needed overtime to fend off a spirited Memphis Grizzlies team. Orain Buchanan takes us through the Warriors Rockets highlights. Western Conference second best team Golden State Warriors were on the road to face a young Houston Rockets. That meant one thing. League MVP candidate Steph Curry versus, well, everyone on the Rockets team. Houston Rockets started off strong with some huge slam. This one coming in from Kevin Porter Jr. who went on to end the night with 10 points. None better than that finish. However, Steph Curry and the newly named All-Star Andrew Wiggins were having none of that as they both kept the Warriors at some distance from the Rockets. Over in the second half, Clay Thompson went into his bag of tricks, showing his versatility with a tough finish. Call that an and one. Steph Curry, who oftentimes makes his defenders look stupid, lived up to expectation, putting defenders on skate. Even with a jump ball, he wins it, then he drills it. 40 points on the night, his sixth 40 point performance this season, as the Warriors came away with a 122 108 victory. Steph Curry in his post-game assessment spoke on how he gets criticized whenever he has an off night, contrary to the one he had last night. It's the gift and the curse of the bar that you set. Like, it's part of the nature. You can get all the praise when things are going well, and obviously, you know, there's something to talk about when I don't meet that level. And it's not so much the commentary, because I obviously, when I walk off the court, I'm the first one to judge the way that I play. And, um, understand when I don't meet that level and you try to you know deal with the frustration when that you know happens you know over a consistent period of time and obviously it's it's a little new but it it uh it's keeping me kind of dialed in on how to still impact the game you know even if shots aren't falling and understand that when they do fall we're extremely tough to beat we're already tough to beat but um that's got to be a part of us trying to win a championship. So, like I said, it just requires you to remove yourself from the moment and understand the big picture of all the work that you put in is going to show up. And it has before, and it's going to do it again. Other results on the night saw so Cavaliers clipping the Pelicans 93-90, to Pacers 122-116 over the Clippers. 76ers without Joel Embiid got by the Grizzlies 122-119 in overtime. Knicks were 116-96 winners over the Kings. Celtics 122-92 over Miami Heat. Gary Trent Jr. with 31 points at the Raptors to a 106-100 victory over the Atlanta Hawks. And the OKC Thunder 98-81 over Damian Lillard-less Portland Trailblazers. Yeah, so Steph Curry got hot last night, Mariah, after uh, a couple of weeks of, by his standards, below par performances. Yeah, and what we saw from Steph Curry, you know, that 40 points he said after in the post-match interview that Lance, basically, he was just enjoying the game that he loves. He was just having fun. And in doing so, and this is something that, you know, a lot of people always say to me, just enjoy what you do and everything else comes naturally. So Steph was giving that advice again and saying how it benefited him. And in doing so, he was able to break Kobe Bryant's record for getting the most number of 20-plus points in a fourth corner fourth quarter because in that particular match um, he got 21 points in the fourth quarter so we saw um, the Steph Curry that we're accustomed to you know the Steph Curry that wants to win um, this year's NBA championship and he's looking hot and ready to go yeah 37 uh, 20 point performances in that quarter now for um, Seth Curry um, surpassing Kobe Bryant's 36 and um, you know what the Golden State Warriors with Clay Thompson back were being touted a few weeks ago as being genuine contenders. They had a bit of a stutter, so I'm not sure how people are assessing the Golden State Warriors at the moment and their possible bid for the championship. I think people know that one Steph Curry is hot. And of course, with the assistance of Clay Thompson, they are actual real title contenders. And more so this season, Lance, especially because all the other teams that were um, supposed to be actual title contenders 
when you see them together, they're not looking hot as we expect them to be. The Lakers, they were amazing last season. This season, it's not the same 100% Lakers that, you know, everybody was fearing. And now when you go up against them, you know they would beat them by a massive um, margin and all that. We're seeing a different uh, level of basketball from the rest of the teams. So the Golden State Warriors, definitely title contenders for me. And what I like that coach is doing, Steve Kerr, is that... I, I noticed for this particular game, he integrated a younger player, Lance, Moses Moody. He played one game before, and I get the sense that he already knows that he's going to need these youngsters to come in and step up for the team um, on, on certain days and whatnot. And what Moses did is he came right into the A-team setup, Lance, and he was brilliant. Like, he's a player now that I want to start following because I got the sense that, you know, he's ready for that level. Yeah, I, I heard you just, though, referencing teams that... Um, were expected to be hot and, and not exactly be Yeah, like my hot. team. And I, I want to find out why you didn't mention the Brooklyn Nets because as you made the point, as I heard you going in that direction, I expected you to uh, highlight the Brooklyn Nets as being one of those teams and you, and you didn't. And maybe that was deliberate and, I'll, and it has nothing to do with me supporting the Brooklyn Nets. Let me just get that clear. Me being deliberate about that was to make the comparison that last season... Remember, the Nets wasn't even in the conversation. Okay. It's only since Harden came over, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's why I made that example. This season, yeah, they're in the conversation and whatnot, but I was making the um, example to deal with last season and how hot the Lakers were lands and the fact that every time a team was going up against the Lakers, you'd, you'd have a sort of fear. You'd know that you're going up against LeBron, mm -hmm. Anthony Davis, and Anthony Davis that, fe that felt as if he couldn't step off the gas. This season, mm -mm, mm -hmm. it's a... Uh, yeah, Neither I, here nor there. I heard a Lakers fan last week, Mariah, suggesting that the big man should just quit because oh? his, yes, his teammates are letting him down and and they're 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 soiling his image. So Is he it? should he he should just step away now because the Lakers are a waste of time and, and they 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 hate to see LeBron in the twilight of his career in a struggling team. Oh, so the team is struggling. Yes, not well. LeBron is is playing no, well. No, 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 no. I if, understand. If if, the, if 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 his support team were performing as well as he he is, it'd be fine. It would be fine. And now he has a, a knee injury that has kept him out of the last couple of games. And I saw a report a couple of hours ago that suggests that he will miss their next game and maybe several more games as well. And this is why I have a lot of problem with Russell Westbrook. This is the exact reason, Lance, because. They brought this man into that team to assist LeBron, to help out when Anthony Davis couldn't be his best. And, you know, it's just certain examples and certain instances like this that reminds me that the role that he has brought in to do for a team, he just fails to capitalize on it. He did that um, when he went to the Rockets. He was supposed to help James Harden get an NBA championship. He failed to do that again. So... I would say that a lot of blame has to go to LeBron too because he was the, he's a massive part of selecting the people. He's a massive part of selecting the players. Mm -hmm. He's in all these boardroom discussions. Mm -hmm. He didn't get proper help by picking Russell Westbrook. Yeah, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're going to talk to Alistair Albert, our NBA expert, who will zone in on a few things that we just spoke of. And also um, his latest team, the Phoenix Suns, who will be up against the Brooklyn Nets tonight. Back in a moment.